Saturday. Hi, I'm going to try to make this real brief. Um, thank you again for tuning in. Um, I really, 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 really sincerely appreciate the feedback from viewers like yourself. Um, I think the comments are awesome. I get awesome emails too. People encouraging me in all my ramblings and um, you know who you are and thank you very much. Uh, it's really nice. So I got a few little goodies for you. Um, last night, <clears throat> me and Miss M were playing Scrabble. That was our evening. Um, and having drinks. So we had a mix of, uh, I had, I had a glass of whiskey. She had, um, this, um, vodka called Pink Whitney mixed with, um, so, uh, soda. So Pink Whitney and soda. And then, uh, what else did we have? Oh, then I, I picked up these, uh, pardon me. I picked up these mimosa, um, sodas from the Whole Foods near, nearby. And those were good too. They were like pre-mixed mimosas. And, uh, oh, and then we even had a, uh, little glass of cherry brandy, um, towards the end of the evening. So it was, I guess, an eclectic drinking evening. And uh, it was the perfect evening for just staying in and buckling down and playing a good old-fashioned board game. So, and lately for me, the thing that's been chilling me out is, is music. I have not been watching even as much YouTube as I usually do. I've been going to my records for comfort and those vibrations from music are just so powerful. You, you, know, you know it if you're, if you're into music the way I am where just the right artist, the right song um, can just put you exactly where you need to be. It's really amazing. But it makes so much sense because everything is vibrations. We are vibrational beings. Um, music is vibrational and you can feel the sincer you can feel sincerity, you can feel truth, you can feel love. You can feel every genuine human emotion in a great song and a great performance and it resonates and then you remember yourself uh, and it that's why it's so powerful and that's why I think I don't want to go I don't want to tangent too much off the top but you know in string theory there's an idea of the universe as vibrating strings like a musical instrument and could very well be that that is really the nature of our, our reality that if everything is vibrational <clears throat> then we then music too is vibrational and everything is is vibrating strings who knows right um which reminds me that um in a another uh, on another psychics youtube channel there was a live uh you know a live reading the other night and um, a commenter here, Melissa Thompson, uh, was at, at that chat, and she mentioned in the chat, they were talking about sound and light. Oh, I know, they were talking about light language, um, which I don't know a lot about and won't go too far into right at this moment, because I'm already, like, way off where I thought I was going to go. But they were talking about light language, and Melissa, who comments here sometimes, mentioned that she has sometimes... Um, seen colors I believe in her third eye or or like as a vision that she interprets as messages like the color the color has um, is translatable to words if you will and this concept makes some sense to me because I'm not an expert on this but it's very strange that in different frequencies like again we're talking about waves again right you know, sound waves and light waves. At different fre frequencies, sound and light are the same thing, depending on what receptors the intelligence that's receiving them is receiving them with. Like, for example, our, 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 eyes, <laughs> our eyes see in a certain range of frequencies, right? But if our eyes were different, we might see in a higher band of frequencies and a, or in a lower band of frequencies. And that's why they think that some, like birds, can maybe even see the magnetic waves that um, 
you know, flow over the planet and might use those as part of their means of travel when they uh, make their seasonal journeys. There's, there's just still a lot of mystery to the natural world and our senses and our, e and our ears. Yeah, like I'm going to point to our ears. Our ears <laughs> hear in a very specific range of frequencies. But of course, we know that dogs hear, you know, dog whistles, they hear in a higher range of frequencies. So who knows what the hell else they, they hear up there? Because what if the higher the vibration, the closer you are to hearing spirit? Could be. So if human beings had different types of ears, if we could hear much lower frequencies or much higher frequencies, the way we would perceive the world would be different. And so what I'm saying is what would what might be perceived as light with one set of senses might be sound in another set of senses. In, in a sense, they're, intercha they're, they're inter interchangeable at certain frequencies. Um, where do I go from here? There's so much to say, but I don't want to say too much. So again, Melissa Thompson was commenting in this in this live feed the other night, like like I said, that um, she was seeing colors that she was able to attribute as having um, like words, like or a message. She could she could she could translate it into language, into sound, um, and she would have to speak to that more directly to really you know let us know. And maybe if she sees this video, she will comment and, and explain further, but. I took it further in my head because the the psychics were talking about light language. I think this was actually Debbie. I think this was Free Spirit um, Tarot. And anyone, if they saw it, that can correct me if I'm wrong. And they were talking about, they were discussing this concept of light language, which I do not understand. But apparently um, some people speak it. But I took it in a different way in my head. I was thinking that there might be such a thing as light language in in spirit form because light would be a universal language for example supposedly like we don't really have eyes per se in spirit but we see what and what we see i've heard it said many times is we see the the light of the other soul that we're interacting with the other person or persons we're interacting with we see their light and their light tells their whole story like literally like okay just imagine someone uh with a you know hugely pure essence and their light is like super bright and maybe it's got you know um uh ultraviolet in it which is like the crown chakra or maybe it's got gold and silver in it and by these colors you would know the nature of the spirit you're dealing with like you would know immediately that would be your signature and in fact it may be beyond language because apparently you know, we don't really have names on the other side i mean you can choose to still have your name i believe but names are less important like your your name is actually your signature your 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 essence speaks for itself if that makes some sense and again, this is like slightly speculative on my part. I'm not saying that I know this to be absolutely true, but intuitively, it makes a lot of sense to me. So if we know people by their aura, by their, by their light, if we are essentially light, then why wouldn't we actually communicate with light? Like if I want to communicate an idea to, let's say, in spirit, after death, I meet a soul from some distant galaxy that has a completely different language than we have on Earth, because obviously they would. Maybe their language isn't even spoken. Well, what would be the common language between us? It might be light itself, by which I mean, let's say I have a thought in English, Earth English, but it is transmitted as light because light and sound are interchangeable. They're one. It's sent as light to my um, new friend on the other side from whatever galaxy, and they respond in you know in their mind in their consciousness with their own language. But it again is equivalent to light. And when that light hits me, I understand it. Like 
because the light communicates the whole idea. Like light itself is able to communicate complete concepts because it is interchangeable with sound and therefore it is a its own language. Does that make sense? I think I think I kind of got it. So this is this is my idea of light language, of what light language might actually be on the other side. Uh, not provable, but but just conceptually, that's how it could work. And so for Melissa, she could get she could she could see light and interpret it. Um, you know, in in English, she could she could do a translation, so to speak. So, okay, that's not where I was planning to go at all, but it had been on my mind. So I'm glad it's in there. Uh, what I really wanted to talk about, I think I already started, was telling you about Scrabble Night last night. So, yeah, the music. So the music that we were playing set the mood for the evening. And it, it reminded me how powerful music is, those vib the vibrations of music. And it even started in the afternoon. I was at work, and it was kind of a slower day, so I had a moment to go and peek um, online and... I was watching, I just had it running in the background while I was doing something else, a James Taylor live video for the song Line Em Up, which is, um, I don't know how well known it is. It's one of his more recent compositions compared to his old, old stuff. And I just loved the song, and I loved the performance that he gave. It's actually on his YouTube channel. He has his own YouTube channel. And he gives this 10-minute introduction to the song that sounds like me rambling. Ha <laughs> ha! So we had that in common. But he explains the background of the song in a really interesting way. And then the performance of the song is just him and a piano player. And I just loved it. I just loved it so much. It just really touched me. And I have found this week with with the, where the energy has been at that music has been the thing that has been the most comforting. Um, and music, of course, even aside from the words in a song, music is its own language. And sometimes it says everything that we, we can't even say in words. Um, so that's why it's so powerful sometimes. And um, anyway, music's been my go-to. So what we were listening to last night while we were having drinks and playing Scrabble was... Um, a jazz artist named Esperanza Spalding, who I highly encourage you to check out. She's a young um, jazz composer. She plays bass like a monster, and she's a then she sings too, and then she writes all her own tunes and very, um, very beautiful and brainy too, like very complex compositions. And um, I really like her. And I booked her a few times when I was working. Um, at at the art center that I used to work at and met her and liked her very much and um, hope to see her live again sometime in the future. Um, Esperance Spalding, the two records that we listened to were Chamber Music Society and Radio Music Society. Chamber Music Society being more of a, or of a, of a the record with strings, so jazz with, with a string quartet or small ensemble. And then we listened to... Uh, the band The Sundays, and it was their last record, which was called Static and Silence, The Sundays, Static and Silence, which is a beautiful record, mostly ballads, um, other than a couple of the singles. And um, if you've not heard The Sundays before, they're kind of like jangly, jangly guitar pop, dominantly acoustic guitars, but really nice, um, sweet vocals, female vocalist. British. And then the last artist we listened to was also British, um, a British singer-songwriter from the 80s named Lloyd Cole, Lloyd Cole. And the record we listened to, I think it was called oh, Like a Broken Record, or that's the opening song. But, um, so those were the artists. Okay, so I'll delay no further. Before we played Scrabble, we had the music on, and we were just sitting and talking, and talking about like current events and politics and the economy, and really about supply chains and, and all of the pressures that are kind of starting to emerge now with the economy. Um, I think that, yeah, we may, we may see 
some persistent supply issues, but I don't feel it's a cause for panic. I think that we are still in a continuing period of disruption globally that for lots of reasons, you know, COVID certainly, politics, um, cultural changes, there's just a lot going on. And so I know people can feel overwhelmed sometimes, including myself, but I don't stress it too hard because it will all work out. And if we have to pay a little more for goods or if we have to do without certain things that we are used to having, then we will adjust, we will adapt. I mean, uh, the abundance in this country in particular is still incredible. We, we don't maybe even know how good we've had it. And part of maybe this transition to a different, hopefully better world, I think, I think for certain a better world, is re, re-learning what the true value of things. Like, you, you cannot have indefinite, cheap goods without an associated cost. If everything is cheap, well, that means people aren't getting paid well to make them, whether that's in this country or other countries. So, like, the cause and effect of our, of our choices um, is never, is always, is always present. Um, and I don't want to preach about that, really, but I think it'll be okay. So don't, don't panic. If you want to stock up on some staples, sure. I've been buying cat food ahead for Gabe because I'm concerned. So yeah, I've been I've been doing a little bit of that advanced buying more than I used to for like just certain things. And like I have a whole huge bag of rice, like 25 pound bag of rice, but I've had that for a while. Um, and it's uh, like a organic whole grain or whatever. And it really, um, it's delicious rice and make rice whenever I feel like it. And it's very affordable when you buy it, you know, in, in ridiculous quantities, quantities like that. So anyway, we were talking, Miss M and I were talking about that. And then we were talking about, well, everything was crossing over, but we were talking about how, how tough it is now for like millennials and, and the newer generations coming up because of the way the economy has shifted, especially with the cost of education. So that, this, this is the point. We were talking about the cost of tuition in New York State. When I graduated from college in uh, 93, I think my tuition was 2,500 bucks, which is unheard of now. And really since like pretty much beginning with Reagan, um, state and federal support for um, like state college systems has been declining steadily and then tuition has been rising steadily in response. And so now students are coming out of a school with just ridiculous debt, almost crushing debt before they even get their lives started. And that's just, it's just not right. And I know there have been steps to mitigate it, like here in New York State, um, I believe it was Cuomo who signed um, a bill called uh, the Excelsior Act or whatever, where you can get free tuition to a state uh, school if you um, live in the state, live and work in the state at least, I think, four years after you graduate. And if you break that agreement, then then you owe the money that you would have owed. So um, that's like an incentive to keep, keep um, our people in the state, but yet give them um, more or less free education. So I, I think that that's great. Um, I know I have another friend I know who both of her sons were able to go to um, SUNY schools, State University of New York schools, SUNY schools, because of Excelsior, and they wouldn't have been able to otherwise. So that is really like lifting up the next generation. I mean, I don't personally benefit from it. My taxes go towards it, but I don't have a problem with it because we're investing in the future, you know, future, future of our state and our country, right? Anyway, so many tangents. So we're talking about education and we're talking about tuition costs and this, this is the conversation just before Scrabble starts. Okay, you ready? Finally, it took me 20 minutes to get to the payoff. So, college, tuition costs, debt. We go to the Scrabble board. We pull 
are seven letters each. They didn't come up in order, but my seven letters pulled right from the box spelled the word tuition verbatim. When I arranged them, I was like, oh my God, we were just talking about tuition. The first, like, I pulled the, the, the seven letters for tuition. So the first word I laid on the board was tuition. And I said to Miss M, I said, if this isn't proof of synchronicity and a meaningful universe, I don't know what is. And then she realized that she, among her letters, had Ava, which is the name of her friend's dog. And she had also been talking about Ava during our conversation pre-Scrabble. So we each pulled in our letters. It was almost like, now that I think of it, it's almost like Tarot, like where like, how do the cards come out correct for Tarot readers when they can come out in any order? But yet somehow in our little magical, our scientific yet also magical universe, the, the messages, the messages from spirit come through. So I pull tuition, she pulls Ava, and we're just amazed. And I'm just like, wow, that is so cool, right? And I took a picture of it and I was like, I'm going to share that on YouTube because it's just another one of those synchronicities that you just cannot explain away rationally. But to me, it's more evidence of a meaningful universe. And that means that spirit is with us in these hard times, right? So we just got to stick, stick to it, stick to it, stick to it, do what works for us, do what works for us. I mean, I'm going to... I'm going to bathe myself in music for uh, for as long as I need to until, um, well, for the rest of my life. But, you know, every day, if music is what's going to get me through, I'm just going to burn out my record collection and go crazy. And I'm, and I'm working on some new music, too. Uh, and then here's another little funny tag. On the very last CD that we played at the end of our second game, well, there were two, there were a few things that were funny. Um, I was winning the second game. We were playing up to 200 and we were running out of letters. And um, the word Randy, like, you know, Austin Powers, Randy. Randy was already on the board. And Miss M was joking around that, oh, I could put this B on the board and make, brand make Brandy. And I'm like, yeah, you can. Like, you can actually play that move. And she's like, oh, because you can make a new word from an existing word, but you can't make like a plural word from an existing word. You know, like if you had um, stick and then you had an S, like you can't make sticks and make it a new word. But Randy to Brandy is a new word. And then when she played the B, it came to, I think, 21 points, which was exactly what she needed to win the game. So she leapfrogged me because I was leading at the end. She won the second game with exactly 200 points. Uh, and then, of course, we had a glass of brandy because I had the cherry brandy, the Mohawk cherry brandy bottle on the top of my fridge uh, for special occasions or actually for any occasions because brandy's not that great, or at least this one isn't, but it's just a fun little thing to sip in a glass with a couple of ice cubes. So we naturally had to have a cherry brandy after brandy was the game winning word. But during that last game on the last of the four CDs, we were listening to the Lloyd Cole CD. And the last song on the CD is called Double Happiness. Okay, you with me? Double Happiness is the name of the song. And I remembered it was a copy of the record that my brother made for me because he's a Lloyd Cole fan. So it was on CD, and I remember thinking, you know, I think the CD has some scratches on it. I hope it plays okay. And it played all the way through until it got to the 11th song, the last song, Double Happiness. And then Double Happiness just kept skipping. But being that it was called Double Happiness, it kept skipping like, da 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 double da 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 double 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 happy happy happiness like like a literal pun. 
like the song Double Happiness is doubling itself in the CD player. And then we just laughed. And then I think she played the B on the the B on the ran, on Randy to make it Brandy. So it was all like tied together, all that all that juju, right? And then we just laughed. And it was good. So there you have it. Those are my synchronicities. Pulling those first seven letters and discovering that tuition was in there after we just talked about tuition for young people. I just I was. I was kind of blown away. You can, I suppose a skeptic could write it off, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a skeptic. I'm a believer and you probably are too. So, um, this went on longer than I thought as usual. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend. I need to do some raking and then my mom and I are going to a play here in Buffalo later in the evening. Um, a friend of mine is one of the people who runs a, a theater company called Alleyway, and they are doing a drag production of the Golden Girls, in which all of the lead characters are in drag, are you know Blanche and all of them. They're all in drag, and I guess it's pretty racy. So we're ready for some laughs tonight, um, and that's that. So have fun, um, be well. I look forward to your comments um, and emails as always. So thank you for being here for me, letting me express myself and, um, you know, giving me, um, you know, re reciprocating. It's really appreciated. It's really nice. Thanks. Bye.